Hey guys, this is Chris again coming at you with another video. Today's video is a little bit different, kind of straight to the collection. Now this isn't a state of the collection in the sense that I actually have all the watches here and I'm showing you the watches. This is just me kind of telling you the, all the different watches that I've had and I've, I've compiled a list of pretty much my lifetime watches. So far I'm up to about 70 and I'm sure I've probably forgotten some here and there in between. This is like from the mainly from the time that I've gotten serious about five six years ago into collecting once I got my orange monster and everything and this is also including way way back in the day because I've always had a watch of some sort quick wristwatch check by the way I am wearing that Zen 104 but this will be a little bit of a long-winded video by the way just to, just to give you a uh, warning but like I said this isn't a state of the collection in, as in the sense that I'm showing you all these watches this is me reading off a list here of a list that I've compiled just to show you what experience I've had in the collecting world and just to show you uh, a different kind of state of the collection. And I, I, I kind of want to urge all the uh, a bunch of other YouTubers, if you can, do a state of the collection, compile a list of all. I, I think everybody would be interested to see every watch that you've had in your lifetime. Just to see what experience you've had or do have. Some of us just starting and then others of us have been there in, in the hobby for years. So it'd be cool just to see a, a list of what everybody's had, what they, what was gone, what what's been kept. Now with this, I have been able to keep a lot. Uh, there there are three main watches that I've been able to keep that from experience that I really know I love and that I know I will keep. And there have been some sad ones that I have let go. By the way, the Squally is gone. I did just sell the Squally. I'm about to ship it out on my way to work here in a little bit. But um. I, I did sell it again, <laughs> only to uh, probably help fund another watch, which I'll mention probably in another video later on. But the three main watches that I've, I've been able to keep are, of course, the Zen 104, the G-Shock All Meta Square, and my Omega Seamaster. Those are three that definitely aren't going anywhere. And if I quit watch collecting, quit buying watches today, which I know is not, we all know it's not going to happen, especially with the channel. But if I quit watch collecting, quit buying watches today, I would be happy with that three-piece collection. And that that's just over the years of learning of all these different watches. Some of these watches I have bought for the channel and have been quick clips, you know, just to kind of review here and there also. So, um, but it, I, I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm just reading off my list here. Let's start with Casio. I've had two different edifices. Of course, as you know, the uh, one major one is the 38 millimeter, 40 millimeter one I just reviewed not too long ago. It's actually my, my most viewed uh, watch on the channel. I've had two different ones, and I can't remember the other uh, model edifice that I had. I had it a couple years. It's been a couple years back. Of course, I've had the F91. I've had the real timer, aka the Casio Royale. Of course, I still have that. Best 25 bucks I'll say uh, I've spent on a watch ever. G Shocks, I've had at least 10 or 11 different G Shocks, guys. At least 10 or 11, and counting the ones I have now, I have about three or four now. And G Shocks will always be a mainstay in the collection, especially the DW5600. And um, speaking of G Shock, by the way, my buddy Kevin over at uh, Wrong Time Watch, he sent me this in to check out this camo one. Uh, look for a full video on this coming soon. Uh, fossil, yes, I have had fossil. I've had three different fossils, uh, probably more than that. There used to be a fossil store over by my house, over uh, as you know, I grow, grow up, up down in Myrtle Beach, and we used to ride our bikes to the mall. The what used to be called the Pottery, they used to have a fossil store. So I would go there as a, you know, high school or whatever, or younger, and check out the watches they had there. That's kind of one of the things that got me into watches as a young kid. And there's really nothing wrong with fossil guys. A lot of fossils actually do have sacred movements, in case you guys didn't know. And as you know, fossil also bought out Zodiac. So I, I do feel like they have some watch enthusiasts running the brand. They are more of a fashion brand these days, but which they always have been. But they are not bad watches, guys, for what they are. And especially getting people, you know, younger kids and into watches, which I think is pretty cool. And of course, with Timex, I had the Weekender. I still have the Expedition. Never really wear it that much, though. And the Timex Q, which is one of my favorite Timexes, that vintage reissue, which is really cool. Then um, next, I had the Breitling, the Super Ocean Heritage 2. As you know, I had the 44mm version on that, guys, the blue dial. Now, I am thinking about picking up a black dial 42 because I missed that one. And the only reason I got rid of the blue dial was because I felt like it was a little too... Um, it was, competition on wrist time for the Omega which the Omega was my favorite watch or is my favorite watch still 
it, it, it competed with the Omega too much for his time because both being blue dials. So I feel like that's one of the reasons why I got rid of it, and that's why I think I might go with a black dial 42 millimeter this time, and, and I definitely probably will go used or get a, a new at a discount because used secondhand, you you can get a pretty good deal on those guys. Um, of course, as you know, the Zenith Alpha Mirror was a long time grail of mine. I was fortunate to be able to get a long time grail of mine experience it for a little while, and it's just one that I just didn't really wear, and that's all part of the journey you learn. Sometimes you get a long time grail, it, and it didn't really disappoint. Don't don't get me wrong; it was a great watch. Like I said, it just didn't it didn't disappoint. It's just not my style. That's one thing you guys got to figure out is your style on what you like to wear, what you don't like to wear. I'm just not a chronograph guy, guys. Um, like the Navitimer is on my list. I do want to get a blue down Navitimer at some point, or the Zen, the 904, something like that. Um, but uh, other than that, this probably about the only chronograph I got on my eyes on maybe experience the Seamaster at some point I feel like everybody has to experience a Seamaster uh, collector whether you try it on or whatever else and of course with the Omega the Seamaster my favorite watch love that piece it's not going anywhere they are actually going up in value I saw that it's getting close almost to what I paid for it by about a thousand or so and of course uh, the health and I had the Shark Diver which is a great watch I do kind of miss that one I had the um, Shark Diver 38, and I also had the Helsin, um, the one I had traded with Bruce. It was the 42, I believe it was. Comment down there below um, if you remember. I, you look at my archives and, and the videos and see that both great watches, great made, especially for Mega Brand. I see why they get so much love. Of course, Seiko, the Orange Monster, is the one that really seriously. And that's one that's not going to go anywhere, guys. It'll still always be here. And like I said, that's one that kind of got me seriously, seriously into watch collecting uh, all those years ago. Like I said, I picked it up. I was lucky to get it before they were sold out. 180 bucks off of Amazon, guys. And I know it's up to value since then. I could probably sell it for a lot more than what I paid for. But that's just one that's not going to go anywhere, guys. Like I said, it got me into the hobby. It was my first real watch, I guess, as they call it. And then also I had had the Mini Monster. Sorry, I'm just reading down here on the list, guys. The SBDC 055, the Patty, that was the blue and black one. I do kind of miss that one that, that had the uh, kind of wave dial, the blue and black Patty. Also, of course, the SBDN 051, the Patty Turtle. I do kind of miss that one. That probably will be a rebuy, guys. I do miss the Patty Turtle. The Baby Solar Tuna, that one's gone. SKX 007, I've had that at least twice, and the 009 at least twice, and of course I still have the 011J, the orange orange version, the JDM version, that's one that definitely won't go anywhere, of course you know I wear the orange with the purple band, orange and purple being Clemson. Let's see, what else do we have here, the SNZ, the 50 Fathoms, that's a great watch guys, SNK 89, and then the SNK, the Sicko 5, the more dressy style watch I had for a little while. Both of those have long since been gone. Now, I've also just recently sold the Seiko Sumo that I had. So, I feel like everybody needs experience with Sumo at some point. Believe it or not, guys, they really don't wear that bad. The Citizen Pro Master I bought and sold twice. And I'll probably end up rebuying that again. Those are great watches, especially for the value, guys. You can't beat the Citizen and the... The Eco Drive movement on those, just reliable everyday beaters, and they're so versatile. Also, I had the Citizen Nighthawk. My uh, old roommate, Ked, actually owns that watch now. Um, Zelos, I've had the Swordfish. Now, with Boulder, I've had the Odyssey, the White Ice, I had the Expedition, the Eager, and the Venture, which is the Quartz version of the Venture. Great watch, guys. Wears like it's barely on the wrist. Moving on down the list, I've had the Maurice Lacroix, the Akon, and believe it or not, that's actually one that I missed. And it just didn't get a lot of wear time. I may end up getting another one of those. I just love the looks. Then with Motha, of course, I had the SkyQuest GMT. And the wet blue dial, which was killer blue dial, and that, that bracelet is almost as comfortable as my Omega, guys. It's a great all-around watch. Okay, and then with Dan Henry, I had the 1969 a while back. This has been a while back. That was actually the first watch I bought from John over at Watch Gauge back in the day. Um, NTH, of course, the Amphion. Squally 1521, I mentioned that. That one is gone. It's on its way out now. The Zen 104, of course, I'm wearing that. Zen U1, I do miss that one, and that is going to be another rebuy. Either that or the Breitling may be the next buy. 
Vostok Amphibia, the Scuba Dude, of course. I've had the Invicta Pro Diver, and they, they aren't bad watches. That's one of those ones I did buy for kind of review, but they are not a bad wear, guys. Uh, Hamilton Khaki King, of course. And then with Orient, I've had the Bambino, a couple different Bambinos. Uh, the Yellow Mako, guys. I've had the Yellow Mako twice now. The Orient Defender, the regular Mako, the Blue Dial, the Kamasu, and the Triton, which is now the Neptune. I've had that. And let's see what else that is down on this list. The Tudor Black Bay with the Ed Amendment, the Rose. That was my first series Swiss piece. As you guys know, if you look back, the Foilus, the uh, Wavemaster I had. The Janal Ocean Rover was one of the very first pieces I had on the channel. And I and I appreciate Janal for sending that out and you know giving a newer channel when it was new and barely any viewers or barely any subscribers. A chance to uh, take a look at a cool watch and, and I do think it's a cool watch regardless of the controversy behind them guys I just wish they would come out and be a little more transparent about the company about where they came from and everything but other than that it's really a great watch guys um man to valley I've had that uh, the lock of quartz I can't remember the name of the actual model on there and of course the docks of the sub 300 the Clive Custard edition I, I like that watch. I just didn't really like the bracelet. I think I wanted to go for the beads of rice bracelet, guys. The scarf, of course, the D100, and the Oris Aquas I had in for a little bit. The Great Barrier Reef. That was a cool, uh, cool watch to experience, guys. And that's pretty much almost all of them, guys. And like I said, I, I've probably forgotten a couple different ones. Just, just to show you guys what all I've had, um, and now some that I kind of missed out on, or the deals didn't quite go through, and then they were almost through, was the GLC Sector Dow, which I kind of wish I had ended up staying and been more patient with that one, because I would have probably still kept that one, and the Explore 2 40mm on the uh, Black Dow. Uh, there were just reasons that the deal didn't go through on that, um, but I kind of wish I didn't get that one as well. So, I was close to Rolex, guys, and close to a JLC. I will have a JLC at some point. Probably, I kind of want to reverse, though, but that'll be way down the run. But again, just to show you guys, you know, uh, all the watches that I've experienced. And it, it's definitely a journey, and hopefully you guys enjoy the journey along with me. And I'll show you the different experiences, and hopefully you guys can experience as many watches. Just as my buddy Randy Rob says, you gotta experience as many watches as you can. I, I'm sure his list is probably even more than this. But like I said, I urge all the other YouTubers just to, to compile, a, just sit down and compile a lifetime uh, state of the collection list, guys. Go over what you have. Uh, let the viewers know what all you've had, what what you're thinking about getting, and, and just to show everybody that it's it's all about the journey. Everybody takes a different journey. It's a fun journey, and, and yes, it is expensive journey. So if you get down the rabbit hole, as they say, of watch collecting. It's, it's definitely a fun journey. You meet a lot of cool people, guys, and I, I've, I've met a lot of lifelong friends because of watch collecting. And it, like I said, just a great overall hobby. Just ignore the negative, stay on the positive. And like I said, yes, this has been a lot of money that I spent, but it's also been an experience. And now I know what I want for sure. And, and also, don't buy stuff just because other people tell you to buy it, like other YouTubers or whatever. You know I'm not going to tell you to buy something unless I actually like it, like it. And that's just me. That's a subjective opinion, guys. Don't take it to heart. Buy what you want to buy. Buy what you love to buy. Let me know down in the comments how many lifetime watches have you had. Do you have a big collection like that? You have I know guys that have 60, 70 pieces that just can't get rid of anything or don't want to get rid of anything because they they uh, they get too attached to their watches. Do you think you will have a big collection or do you think you'll be down to three or four main pieces? Anyways guys, this has been Chris with a quick lifetime, well, quickies lifetime state of the collection video if you guys haven't already please like subscribe down there below sorry for the long-winded talk um i will see you guys in the next video all right peace